So Dustin Nicole is 34 years old and he has four kids. He's an HVAC technician by training and has been driving rideshare for a little more than three years. He's also got a popular YouTube channel called Dustin is Driving that just surpassed 20,000 subscribers. But when he's not driving or making YouTube videos, Dustin is working on becoming a real estate agent for extra income. And as he likes to say, being diversified is always smart to do. So Dustin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Harry? I'm doing excellent. I'm excited to have you on. I know uh, I know we've been talking for a long time about doing some collaborations together and some interviews, and uh, I'm glad we finally made it happen. Yeah, so am I, man. This is a privilege. Thank you very much for having me on. Cool. Yeah. So I'm definitely, I'm excited to dig into really your history and how you got started with the YouTube channel and also how you grew that channel. But before we do that, uh, I do want to ask you one quick question to start. And what I'm curious is what's one video that you've made that's been your favorite and why? Now, I know you've made a lot of videos, which we'll get into, but I'm curious if you've got one favorite and if you could tell us why it's been your favorite, that'd be great too. Actually, yes, I really do. It's the one, it's the little parody one I did with my neighbor across the street. Um, I thought it was really funny and it, it shows everybody what actually can happen because I took a bunch of my experiences that have happened to me, plus the whole new say my name thing. I threw it all together and just showed people exactly how rides can go, but that drivers shouldn't put up with so much. Mm -hmm. like, so to me, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, we got a lot of laughs out of it. A lot of people thought it was real, but I did disclose at the end that it was a parody. I don't know how people thought too much was real because I, I was doing like things that drivers shouldn't do as well. Like I didn't have my seatbelt on. So I would have thought that gave it away. Um, what I said the guy's name was. I dropped a bunch of subtle hints and people sh would know like he was giving me attitude before he got into the vehicle. Um, these are, like I said, a lot of things that actually happen to drivers all the time. And sometimes drivers don't know how to handle it, so they'll just roll with it and hope everything goes well. And sometimes you need to take the initiative and just, you know, stop it in its tracks to save you from a f uh, future headache. Yeah, that, that's good advice. And I think it goes in line with a lot of the, the theme of your videos. I mean, I guess real quick, while, well, before I forget, I mean, why don't you tell us what the Smackovich is? Oh, uh, yes. The Smackovich here, well, it is for all those unruly or irritating pest i mean passengers <laughs> <laughs> we all know we all have those times we have those rides where you're just like either people are asking you too many questions or they're getting on your nerves from like trying to eat or trying to take over your music or something like that and it just you know instead of you know being vulgar or anything else it just makes you just might make you want to smack a bitch you know what i'm saying when someone makes you upset and mad you just want to smack a bitch <laughs> And I guess so for those uh, listening, they can, how would you describe this uh, tool you've got in your hands? Um, it's a nice about foot and a half pink fly swatter because, you know, I love to put lift in the spotlight. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, and it's in the shape of a hand. So it's, you know, it, it just, it, it makes it closer to home. It makes it feel like it's just an extension of you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely one thing that I think really comes out in a lot of your videos and your content is that you really are yourself. Like, I feel like if any, if I met you in person or if any of your, your followers, subscribers met you in person, you would pretty much be the exact same person. And I think that's pretty cool and kind of how you've been able to grow your channel. But before we dig into your channel, I am curious to know how you got started driving and, you know, really, I guess, uh, talk a little bit more about, how, you know, your experience. I guess it sounds like you've been doing it for three years, right? Yes, I've been doing it for three years. Um, I actually found this out because one of my neighbors was just started this up and um, knew that I was no longer going to be because I, I was a stay at home dad for like four or five years because, mm -hmm. you know, we had so many kids. <laughs> so one of us had to stay home and I was still doing HVAC on the side, but I just wasn't making enough to supplement because my name wasn't out there anymore because I wasn't hustling like normal. So my neighbor was like, Hey, you heard about this Uber thing? And I was like, what's that? And, you know, and they were like, go pick up passengers. And of course, the first thing I thought when I heard that was, Oh yeah. You know, back in 99 and stuff, don't order rides or don't jump in strangers cars. And yeah. now we literally order rides to jump in strangers cars. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And I'm, I, I consider myself a people person. I like meeting people. Um, you know what I mean? You never know what new opportunities may be around the corner or you just meet some awesome people. You just never know. So she asked if I want to try it out. So I used her referral code, you know, hooked it up. And that's back when everything was an actual bonus. That was really awesome days back then. 
I completed my 20 trips. I think I made 150 bucks off that. Mm -hmm. And I like, I think everybody, when you first start, you were hooked. Like I was hooked into it. It was so much fun. I was driving around. Yeah. People want to always, you know, trying to sometimes complain about the miles and everything else, but sometimes it's not all about money. Some people out there just literally have nothing to do because they're retired in something. They want to make a little extra money and have some fun at the same time. What's better than doing ride share? Yeah. Amen to that, brother. So where are you driving these days? You're in Florida, right? Yes. I am in the Tampa, Florida market. Okay. So what's it like uh, driving for Florida? Because I don't know if I've interviewed too many people from Florida. Definitely. I think you might be my first from Tampa Bay and maybe tell us a little bit about, are, are you still driving much? Yes. I still do the weekends only. I don't do i uh, I'm not full time. I always tell people you, you, you don't really want to do this full time. And there are mm -hmm. markets that you can where it's profitable, but in many markets out there, driving 50, 60 hours a week is not something I want to do. So I, I try to keep it as part time as possible. So that way I can focus on doing my other gigs. Cause to me, Uber and Lyft are really just stepping stones mm -hmm. to something else. They make you um, think about being an independent contractor and how to hit that. Like, like give you the blueprints to handle your own business. Cause you have to file your own taxes. You know what I'm saying? You have to take care of your vehicle. Everything's on you. So it gives you like a heads up of what potential other things you could actually divulge yourself into and be profitable in doing it. Yeah. I like the way you put that, that it gives you the blueprints to, you know, kind of build another, a real business or another successful business. And, uh, I guess you sort of did just that with your YouTube channel, right? I mean, you started driving and you know, what made you kind of first want to start recording your thoughts and putting them onto YouTube? Actually, believe it or not, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a bunch of your videos out there and, uh, you know, that your tips and tricks and you were telling everybody, but it was more of, you know, for your market. So I was thinking to myself, huh, maybe I could try to help people out in my market. And then it went from there to just branching out and in general. And then we know we hear about drivers, like there's no training for any of this. We all yeah. know that they give you that, what, that three minute little video that just describes almost nothing. It just shows you how the app actually works when you want to order a ride. So I was mm -hmm. like, huh, maybe I can help out and give my two cents on how I feel things are and what should be or shouldn't be and what drivers should or shouldn't be doing. Okay. Now I should clarify. I didn't make you answer that question and say that I was your inspiration, but I do. No, no, you did not. <laughs> but no, you were, you, I saw you first and then I saw Uberman. Cool. Well, no, I do. I do think that is cool. And one thing that I've really enjoyed seeing over the years is that just the sheer number, you know, I think on YouTube specifically, there are a whole bunch of YouTubers, you know, that we try to actually feature here and there. And I know we've shared a bunch of your videos and mentioned them in articles and feature them on a couple of our sites. But I do think it's cool that there's more and more YouTubers out there, uh, you know, really just kind of providing information and helping drivers and everyone does have their own spin, which I think is another cool thing about creating content and YouTube. YouTube specifically is obviously there's not one way to do it and be successful. Everyone kind of has their own uh, vision. So I'm curious to know what is your vision for your YouTube channel or, you know, what do you think of when, when people ask you about your YouTube channel, how do you describe it? Um, I describe my channel as being entertaining and educational at the same time, because I try to, I try to keep it real with everybody and give them the tips and tell them what they should be looking out for and heads up. You know what I mean? Like always have a dash cam, uh, puke bags, buckets, chargers for yourself. You know what I mean? Everyone ha needs to know the basics and then they can branch out and do extra things like lights. You know what I mean? Little karaoke machines, have an Alexa in their car. Mm -hmm. but I just try to give people a perspective on everything. And then I try to make some skits and, you know, you know, songs and everything, even though I can't sing. But <laughs> just entertainment that makes sure people realize, I mean, you don't have to be serious about everything all the time. Because if you're doing these gigs and you're not having fun, then you should not be doing them. Yeah, I, I like the way you put that. And I think that definitely uh, comes through in, in your videos, in your channel. I'm uh, looking at your page right now and looking at a couple of your, your past videos. Uh, let's see, going through the titles. Um, you do a lot of videos, <laughs> I guess I would say. <laughs> In the past, uh, let's see, one week alone, it looks like you've done at least nine, or actually at least 11 videos in the past six days. Does that sound about right? Wow. <laughs> I, guess so. <laughs> I, I try to at least do one video a day. Sometimes okay. I'll do a standalone video and a live just so I can keep it, uh, 
being interactive with all my community and mm-hmm. seeing if there's any new things out there that I didn't know I might have missed. I could be wrong about, you know what I'm saying? Just, just trying to stay in, like, in the, like not necessarily in the now, but I want to be there and present with all of them, letting them know that I am there with them. I'm nobody special, so I need to know everything's possible mm-hmm. because we all know this game changes every day. Every day there's something new happening. There's always something new everywhere because there's certain test markets that only uh, Uber and Lyft will release things in that, you know, so people might not even hear about them or see them yeah. if they didn't talk to other people. Yeah. So where do you get most of the information or the ideas for your video? Uh, you just sort of reading the news or hearing from drivers or just, I guess, driving yourself? Um, some of it's driving myself. A lot of it is people emailing me other things that are going on in other markets or my Facebook page that I have because I have like almost 20,000 drivers in there oh, from cool. all over the USA. So yeah, a lot of a lot of people a lot of things get posted in there and then that way they'll message me or something like that and I'll try to talk about it and they'll ask if I've seen this and that and if I haven't then of course, you know, I try to look into it more myself so before I actually report on it, I at least know something of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we'll leave a link to your Facebook group in the show notes and the description. And also I want to, I forgot to mention, but we'll leave a link to that video that you mentioned at the beginning. That was your favorite. Um, We'll get all those links from you at the end so we can share this. So if anyone wants to uh, take a further look at the things we're mentioning, they definitely can. And we'll leave all that information for you. So one video a day, that's a lot. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I know I myself now we've got a few different contributors on the YouTube channel, but even when it was me doing all the videos i think my max was sort of about two a week and one live a month and uh, you're doing probably more videos in one and a half weeks than i've ever done in a month time period so i guess my first question is how long have you been kind of doing it at that pace for and uh is that kind of what your plan is to continue doing it doing that that level forward or do you think you'll get burnt out um honestly i only ever planned to try to do one or two a week (laughs) <laughs> and then suddenly people just would send me something or something would come up in the news. Like um, I had to make a video today about what happened to the, uh, a Lyft driver in New York City. So it's like just when you think you could have a time to relax, something else comes up and then you make mm-hmm. the decision. Hmm, do I want to be first to talk about it or do I want to come back later? And I like to keep all my audience in the now and let them know what's going on now. Because, you know, what I mean, if you, if you don't have all the information you know, when you go out there, something could be happening in your location and you not know about it. And if you would have known about it, maybe you wouldn't have drove that day or something like that. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think definitely that your followers know uh, you're sort of a go-to resource for breaking news, anything happening, you know, really kind of, I would almost say like in real time, you tend to make videos uh, when things are going down, you kind of are first <laughs> on the scene, I guess you would say, which is very cool. I know if people follow my YouTube channel that they hopefully don't expect that because we very rarely do that. Yeah, I just I just get lucky on that from people sending me stuff and had, had an Amazon flex person just leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I get really lucky about that because a lot of people try to keep me updated because they want me to tell everybody else because usually it is something that everybody should know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like when they started changing the surge and everything, everyone, that's something big. People need to yeah. know that. Um, when they're sitting there telling people that uh, they might have different legislations and stuff going on in different spots, when they were going to try to make um, drivers have those lighted up signs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, that might have been the start of something big. Thankfully, it didn't go anywhere because then they realized, you know, it was kind of a waste of time unless people do other things. Um, just try to I just try to keep everybody knowing what's going on, because, like I said before, um, the, the everything changes by day, by minute, by hour. Something new could have happened, good or bad. And people need to know. Yeah, definitely. No, that's a good way to put it. And I mean, I think that, you know, uh, the reason why I'm kind of digging into this, because I feel like I mentioned earlier, I think it's really cool that a lot of rideshare YouTubers have sprouted and popped up, but it does seem like everyone sort of has their own style. You know, there's some YouTubers that every video they do is live streaming. There's others that are sort of, you know, maybe looking at like, what are the questions their audience are asking? Like we tend to do more informational stuff. And it seems like your videos, if I kind of had to uh, categorize most of 
your videos, it sounds like they're sort of like breaking news. Is that kind of what your game plan was when you started your YouTube channel? Was that what you were planning on doing or is that just sort of how it's evolved? That's how it's evolved. All I planned on doing was showing like tips, tips and tricks and like my locations and what other things uh, drivers could use that could relate to their markets. Like, mm -hmm. you know, not uh, driving around aimlessly, wasting gas. Uh, if you do sit somewhere, just wait 10, 15 minutes. Always keep checking the rider app to make sure that you're actually showing an online. Because sometimes when you're online, you might show on the driver app you're online. But with the rider app, you wouldn't be. So that way you wouldn't be getting pings and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And so as far as the type of stories that you look to cover, I mean, definitely looking at a few of your most recent videos, it's a NYC Lyft passenger caught on camera attacking driver, Uber driver interrupting undercover cops. These are all pretty uh, good titles, I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, they all make me want to click and make me want to view. What are your thoughts on sort of the type of stories? I mean, are you looking for positive stories? Are you looking for, I mean, I think that, you know, I know, I know I definitely, I, I guess what I would say is like, I definitely see sometimes when we do articles or videos kind of bashing on Uber and Lyft, those tend to do really well. And so not that I do it all the time, but I sort of know that whenever we need a little boost of traffic, for example, if some those types of topics definitely seem to do well. What are your thoughts on kind of the negative stories about Uber and Lyft? And how do you how do you look at those? How do you cover those? Sadly, <clears throat> I would have to say that there's just not a whole lot of positive stories out there. So really what you have to do is kind of pick and choose which one is the best uh, relates to like what's going on either now in your market or something else. Cause pretty much every day you have like between five or 10 different stories you could choose mm -hmm. with Uber and Lyft. It just depends on which ones. And yes, we all know that the crazier the story, the better, the better <laughs> view count you should get and everything else. So people might engage. So I do try to tend to uh, head towards more of those, but that, then that's also so that way I can make sure I throw in their tips and tricks for yeah. people to stay safe and everything else because it seems like unless there's a video about it people don't realize that they should be using common sense and actually doing something so yes i use i use those videos a lot and some would say they are you know kind of clickbaity from the titles but i do make sure that everything i say is is in there and it shows something happened and then there's a lesson to be learned yeah, you know, that's actually, that's a good point, right? If you see that, all right, this Lyft passenger attacked a driver. I know I've watched a ton of your videos and now that I think about it, you, you know, you do provide a lot of tips afterwards as sort of how to protect yourself or to get out of the car and or even how to de-escalate the situation in the first place. And you're right, you know, if you have, if a viewer has the option of choosing between a video that says like how to protect yourself in, as a rideshare driver or, you know, Lyft passenger attacks a driver, which one do you think they're going to click on? on um, probably the latter. And it sounds like you're able to sort of leverage that from the viewer, but also at the same time, you know, kind of provide them tips and information towards the end of the video after you've explained what happened, right? Yes, that is exactly correct. Because like you said, I mean, you could give, you could have the best information out there and you're trying to give to somebody and people should hear it. But if your title or something's not uh, likable to people, they won't click on it. And then later on down the line, when something does happen, they'll sit there and say, why didn't you talk about this? And it's like, oh, I did talk about it, but you just didn't like the way the title looks. So you didn't click and see it. And now you're coming at me now. Like I just blew it off and never talked about it at all. Yeah. You know, I'm learning stuff right now. So I appreciate you sharing all the good info. And, uh, you know, that is funny. You brought up that people complain about clickbait, but as a content creator, you know, yourself, you're sort of telling me, and I'm kind of agreeing with you that the YouTube algorithm really rewards you for kind of using those clickbaity type of titles, right? You want to get people to click on that video since then you'll get more views and more subscribers and make more money. So it's sort of like YouTube, you know, people complain about that, but YouTube does reward you for doing so. That is correct. As long as your your title isn't like way out left field, right? And Within you're reason, talking about has nothing to do with it. Then I think, I mean, if you're doing something like that, well, then yeah, I mean, you're going to make people upset, and then you you might actually hurt your channel doing it that way. But the way I see it, the way I'm doing it is, I, I give it maybe a little bit of hype, um, maybe a little bit more exaggeration in the title. But it's like you said, it's just something to catch their attention because when you catch people's attention, whether it's good or bad, just like I know when you make them laugh make people laugh they have a better time you know what i'm saying they'll listen more if yeah. you're just sitting there and it's just something stupid people aren't gonna uh want to join in or listen or you know what i mean when they do watch something your time will be like 30 seconds of video and when you have a five minute video and you're only getting like 30 second average 
that kind of kills everything. And then they miss the whole message. Yeah. So if a driver came to you today or maybe one of your fans and said, Hey, Dustin, you know, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube channel for rideshare drivers. What would you tell them or what would your advice be to them? I would tell them, go for it. There's plenty of room out there in YouTube for everybody. Everybody has a different outlook and perception about how they want to do things and think what's good for them and everything else that I honestly think everybody could go out there and make a channel. I mean, I made my channel only last year and I had like, or I made it a year before, but I didn't really start doing anything with it till last year. I had mm -hmm. about a thousand subscribers in April and now I just passed 20,000 this year. So, I mean, it's just, um, anybody can do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause like, you know, we're not, no, we're not special. We're just a normal average people. The only difference is, is we had the nerve to make a channel and actually talk and be comfortable and respond to questions and everything else. Yeah. And I think one of the cool things about your channel is that you do uh, keep it very down to earth, very casual. I know we've tried to schedule before and you don't even record the videos on your computer, right? You just have done it all with your phone. So I think that's pretty awesome because a lot of people get caught up and like, oh, should I buy a new camera or should I get this equipment? Or, you know, really, I think what you've shown is that the content uh, in you know, sort of the following and the audience matters first and foremost. You've been able to grow a channel to 20,000 subscribers and you're sitting here doing an interview with me right now on your phone, right? <laughs> that is correct people anybody out there watching this remember you don't have to have all that expensive equipment if you want to be uh take everything to the next level and do that hey you can do that when you're establishing yourself and get more money and you have all this done but i mean i'm at this point now and I, yeah i still use my phone it's it's convenient i do everything for it upload edit everything possible is done from this phone yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think that's super cool. And obviously, it's working well, too. And I mean, I, I think I would kind of echo your statements for anyone who's getting started. I think definitely there's a ton of opportunity. I mean, even looking at you mentioned that you were watching my channel, and that was what inspired you to start your channel, right? We were typically releasing videos that were more kind of informational, you know, reviewing new programs and services. And I don't know whether you did this on purpose or not, but you kind of stepped in. And now you're doing something, uh, you know, you've grown an audience kind of more on that breaking news and giving like kind of that instant reaction and instant feedback. So that's sort of, you know, we've got 45,000 subscribers and we're not providing any of that to our audience. So you can sort of tell right there. I bet a lot of them are probably subscribed to your channel and probably interested in that type of content. So really you kind of filled a nice void there, right? And I'm sure there's lots of those voids uh, that you're not filling either. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, I need to come back and uh, go back to more tips and tricks and everything. But like we've said before, there's only so many things that you can tell people <laughs> yeah. and people are either going to do it or not, because there's only so much you can do with these gigs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Unless you want to go above and beyond and start doing karaoke and have playstations hooked up and everything else and uh, tablets. I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but everybody needs to know the basics first. And then, yeah, I started doing, like I said, the news thing that just happened to just pop up because so many people were talking about it and you're getting so many questions. You can only reply back to so many people with so much time in the day. So the best thing to do is go live and address everybody at the same time. Um, you can get everyone's different perspective. And, and in the end, no one's really right or wrong. Everyone just has their different outlooks. The only thing that's right and wrong is, you know, simple things like don't pick up on any company minors. Don't take people without proper car seats and booster seats. There's, certain things out there that everybody should know not to do but sadly they keep doing it so that goes to show us at the same time that not everybody listens to everything we say so just because we say it if you don't actually examine it and take it use your common sense with it then it's just kind of pointless <laughs> Yeah, no, totally agree. So I'm curious to know, dig in a little bit on how you actually grew your channel to 20,000 plus subscribers. Was it just releasing a ton of content or was there anything specific you did to promote your channel or promote yourself? What do you think's had the biggest impact? Uh, you know, really kind of going from that zero to 1,000 subscribers and then maybe 1,000 to 20,000. Yeah, from going to zero to 1,000, that is the hardest. That is mm -hmm. the hardest thing. Last year when I didn't have it and then they um, YouTube changed this monetization thing where you had to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours, which is like 260,000 watched minutes. So I have my Facebook group and then I'm in a bunch of other Facebook groups. So I was trying to share my page and everywhere else. Some people liked it. Some people didn't. I got kicked out of a lot of groups for it. So then when I made my videos, I got really lucky at one point and a video I made started going viral like 10 months later 
than when I actually made it. Hmm. It just randomly went viral, started getting me uh, more attention, more subscribers. What was everything. that video? Um, that was, um, I think. Was it the cancellation scams or something like that? Yeah, I think that was the one where, uh, oh, they tried to cancel mid-trip. Yeah. That was the one, yeah. And the people, they didn't have the app and wanted me to take them for cash. And I had to end up kicking them out. And they got mad at me. And that was the only, that was one of the only rides where they actually tried to threaten me like they were going to fight me. Mm -hmm. But it was like, it's not my fault your friend canceled on you. So I don't know what to tell you. If you download the app, I could try to help you out. <clears throat> but I can't take you for cash. Mm -hmm. And that's what drivers need to also know about all there. Please, guys, no matter how many times we say it, <laughs> don't take those cash rides. You are not covered under insurance. And it will be you that's on the line if something happens. You're not being tracked by Uber and Lyft anymore. So if anything happens to you, they won't even know who was on the ride or anything. So please, guys, don't do that. We can't never stress that enough. Yeah. So when you got to that 1,000 subscriber mark, you were releasing, or what, what do you think had the, the biggest impact? Were you Did that had that video gone viral when you're at 1,000 subscribers yet, or were you just sort of releasing a lot of content? At that point, I was just trying to release more content, like one or two every couple days, mm -hmm. just to try to keep my, uh, I don't know if my, my name or whatever, refreshed in the YouTube algorithm. So yeah. that way, hopefully, hoping that eventually either one would go viral again or someone would just see it. But then pretty much after you get to that 1,000, when people are actually starting to watch you, you go live more. That's what I think gets more people to join your channel is when you're going live and they see you're actually interacting with them instead of just making videos that either could be really good or clickbaity. You know what I'm saying? You have to, if you're going to clickbait them and do everything else, you have to interact with them and put in the time talking to people, hearing people out. Uh, and giving your advice and taking advice at the same time, because that's most important. If you can't accept any kind of criticism, don't do YouTube, okay? Because there's going to be lots of trolls, lots of haters. <laughs> and if you can't, you know, like just brush that off or just take a joke or something like that, you don't don't get involved because you're just going to get hurt, your your feelings hurt, and then you're going to feel like a failure, which nobody should. Yeah. Okay, but sadly, there are just a lot of trolls out there, and people need to just you know do you you do you and you be genuine and keep it real and it'll just happen the people that are meant to come to you will gravitate to your personality and everything will go fine from there yeah that's a good point it definitely is very easy for youtubers to leave an anonymous comment so you will get a lot of comments and you know possibly i wouldn't say a lot of negative comments but you know for every 10 or 20 positive you'll definitely get at least one or two negative even if you've got a huge wildly successful channel and uh, you'll, grow, you'll either uh, not make it or you'll grow a thick skin pretty quick. <laughs> one, one or the other will happen. But it's cool to see that you kind of went in and uh, it sounds like the lives were a big strategy. And I mean, I know that I've been on your lives very frequently before and you've got uh, hundreds of people watching live. And your videos, though, I, I've noticed even though you are at a lower subscriber count than us, your videos always seem to do really well initially. Like looking at your page right now, your most recent videos have 2,400 hundred views, 4,000, 4,000, 2,000, 4,000, 2,000, 3,000. Um, so you're sort of either comparable numbers to a lot of our videos with half the subscriber count or sometimes even higher, which, uh, so what, what's the secret? <laughs> uh, I think because I share it on Facebook, I have a Facebook group, Facebook page. I try to use Twitter. You know mm -hmm. what I, mean? I tell everybody all the time, use social media to your advantage yeah. as much as possible. It may or, may or may not work, but you'll never know if you don't give it a try. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, I know when we were growing our channel and blog, we were, you know, trying to provide value to a lot of people in the Facebook groups. And a lot of times, you know, there's so many people spamming links and their own content and stuff like that that uh you know we kind of quickly realized that there are specific ways to do that and it was tough but uh there's definitely some things you can do so it's cool to see you out there promoting the content and growing the channel so you know how would you how, how successful do you think uh, your channel has gotten to be th these days is it sort of where you're at are you kind of making the money you're hoping for or expected or you know wh what are your kind of overall thoughts on the success you've had with your channel so far i owe all my success success to all my subscribers out there which thank you i salute you all um it was all real sheer luck but thankfully now i'm it, it's it's grown past what i ever thought it would be i mm -hmm. never thought i would get to twenty thousand, and if i did especially not as quick as i have um yes it has definitely been great supplemental income i probably average anywhere between 1500 to 2500 a month just from youtube revenue so, so that would be ad revenue nice. 
because that's like a mortgage payment and my car payment right there, which actually I just paid off one of my cars and now I just have to pay off this van and then I'll be good on that aspect. But yes, YouTube is definitely allowing me to do that. So that would be ad revenue, 1500 to uh, 2500 a month, you said, from yes, YouTube? That, yes, that's correct. Okay. And you're doing about one video a day? Yes. So I'm putting a little bit of time to hope I get a bigger return. But I think more, like I said before, I think it's more of the live videos when I'm actually interacting with people and talking to them more so they know that I'm there with them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just a guy sitting in the van. I'm actually out there in the trenches driving with them, experiencing these things. Because a lot of videos I've also done since I'm in a two-party consent state, I don't show my footage. And we all know Uber and Lyft change their services. So you can't show your footage. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to, even if you get consent, because they deactivated uh, Ryan is driving for that. And we all know, I'm pretty sure he had consent. <laughs> he has a huge channel. So I'm surprised they even tried to mess with him. But that's nor here or there. But yeah, I am I like to tell what my what actually experiences I've happened to me the best way I can as a reenactment of telling people, you know I mean? Stuff like this can happen and it is crazy. And, and sad to say mm -hmm. I'm in Florida. So a lot of crazies are here. <laughs> and I have a lot of crazy stories. I have some, I haven't even said because I just haven't gotten to them because there's just so many, so many the, um, people from all walks of life here in Florida. And we all know people come here to retire, vacation, let loose and go crazy. And I'm also in a college town. Yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. So it sounds like you have had more success than you kind of ever would have hoped for or expected making money off the YouTube ad revenue. Are there any other, well, I guess you also uh, have, are, are you revenue or excuse me, monetizing off of driver signups or any affiliate partners or anything like that of substantial amount? Um, yes, surprisingly. Um, now that I'm not with Lyft anymore, all I get is Uber referrals, but I still probably average about uh, 500 to 1,000 a week in uh, referrals from Uber. Mm -hmm. Now, with saying that as well, I also answer hundreds and hundreds of questions yeah. all day, all week long because people have my number out there. They call me or text me, message me, email me. So I'm constantly talking to somebody each and every day, if not multiple people at the same time. Plus, yes, I have the Amazon affiliation, which is great, and anybody can get affiliated with that. So, yes, on um, trying to get people out there to get dash cams and puke bags, buckets, uh, uh, cords, you know, anything like that or anything at all. Because once you click on someone's Amazon affiliation, you could buy anything at all and that will go to help support whoever's link that you use. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think it's important, you know, for, I know I'm curious if anyone ever asks you, you know, when you tell them that you do a YouTube channel, people, the first thing they always ask me is, oh, how do you make money off of that? And you're sort of highlighting that there's actually, there's a quite a few ways to make money, right? <laughs> off of actual YouTube ad revenue, signing up new drivers, affiliate partners like Amazon, where you can review dash cams, recommend services and products that are going to help drivers. And I'm sure there's others too. So do you consider yourself a full-time YouTuber now? Or, or what do you, what do you think? Um, well, that's a good question right there. I never thought of that. I guess since I, I put in, I do videos about every day, I guess I would definitely say I'm uh, a full-time YouTuber because it'd be kind of hard not to say that 11 <laughs> videos in six days. Uh, but it really doesn't feel like it because to me, this is all fun and games. I'm like, I'm having fun. Yeah. Um, I like interacting with everybody else. I'm learning something. I try to make sure they're learning something. Everyone's staying in the now and updated. So to me, this is really fun and I don't consider this a job at all. But thankfully, it's one of the jobs that's actually making me quite a bit of money. Because like you said, with yeah. affiliations, I also have other things. Because there's other people that know that there's apps out there that you can have too. Like I have the Get Upside Gas app, which Harry mm. has as well. And that helps people save money on gas. The simple thing that drivers need to do all the time. Same thing with the Amazon affiliations because, you know, everyone needs dash cams. So there's different things out there that you can apply yourself. And then when you get really lucky, um, like I'm pretty sure you have, you get some sponsors. And then you can make money off sponsors. And then um, even if they have something to sell, then you can use their affiliate links. And it just goes on and on and on. Pretty much when you start doing this, um, the sky's the limit. It goes as far as you're going to go and you can do whatever you want to do. 
Yeah, very cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing all of that info and digging into the numbers and details. Hopefully it is uh, inspiring for anyone out there watching or listening. If they've thought about starting a YouTube channel, uh, definitely seems like a lot of what you're saying kind of comes back to providing value for drivers. You know, whether you're with finding of advertising partners, you want to find partners that are going to provide va value to drivers when you're creating content, providing value to drivers. And that's definitely uh, something I agree with. So, you know, I'm curious to know what's your goal for your channel? going forward where where do maybe you see yourself in one year and five years um hopefully maybe one day i'll catch up to you <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i just want to keep doing what i'm doing i'm branching out more into doing um parodies and stuff like that just trying to have fun with everything because this year as everyone knows if or if they don't know yet it has been a very crazy year with rideshare mm -hmm. it made me end up stop doing the night shift so far so instead of working till like three, four in the morning, now I try to cut myself off at like 12 or one tops, even though two, three is when all the bars close and that's where the potential big money makers are. But then of course with, with, uh, you know, great risk comes great reward. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to outweigh like, eh, do I really want to risk it? Because, you know, if someone was to puke in the van, like thankfully I've only had like five or six pukers ever, but they <laughs> all made it in the bucket because I hand them the bucket. Now, I would not like, I've seen so many people and so many pictures everybody sent me of people mm -hmm. puking all over their windows and every, uh, my wife would kill me if I had to do <laughs> that. She had to get in my van with all the kids and be like, what is that smell? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty, like I said, the, the later you go out there, the risk goes up for just bad things in general happen. Cause you know what they say? Nothing good happens after 12. So. Amen to that, brother. Awesome. Well, wrapping up here, uh, you know, I'm curious, the last question I have for you, I just want to get your take as someone who's been driving for three years and obviously very closely following all of this. Uh, what do you think the future of Uber and Lyft are? What can drivers expect uh, going forward? Oof, now that is a really good question right there. Now, we already know Uber has already put a statement out there before they went or with their IPO saying they're going to make drivers upset. Mm -hmm. Now, they've already shown us a couple different things on making us upset. They got the Uber Pro, which kind of failed. But at the same time, it, it's more of a different level of control. So yeah. it just depends on what people want to drive the way they want to drive or drive the way that the apps are telling them to drive. So <clears throat> people do say autonomous vehicles are going to be the future, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. I know they will be the future eventually. Hopefully we live long enough to actually see them take <laughs> over but i do not see rideshare being affected by that for at least another 10 years yeah. I mean, you know I'm, I, don't, I don't know 100 percent, but just i use my common sense and my knowledge and seeing what's happening out there with um how they've already had incidents which sadly and tragedies and stuff like that happening with these vehicles so to me lawmakers and stuff aren't going to just be putting that everywhere automatically anytime within 10 years plus they have to get the public they have to get the public on board. If we're not on board, like me personally, I'd only take one to make a video in. But I'm scared the whole time I'm sitting in there like, oh, man, this is it. We're going to video me dying. <laughs> so it sounds like that'll be a, a Facebook or a YouTube live we have to look forward to from you. Oh, yeah, because supposedly um, I think they're going to be trying to um, use uh, Florida as another test market in Tampa. From my understanding, the last time I had seen something about it. So I'm actually waiting. And yes, if, if it does happen, I'll make a big deal about it because I will definitely be, I will try it out for all of you out there. I will, yeah. I will roll the dice. You are the rideshare guinea pig. Well, we all appreciate it, Dustin. And thank you very much for coming on. So if people want to learn a little bit more about you, we can send them to your YouTube channel. Dustin is driving. Sounds like you got a Facebook group. Anything else uh, our viewers and listeners should know? Um, those are the main two things I focus on. I do have uh, Twitter and Instagram, but I don't know. To me, I'm not really good at those. <laughs> like I tell people, you don't have to be the greatest with technology out there as long as you try a little bit so that way you know um, if it works for you or not because you won't know unless you try. So Twitter yeah. and Instagram, I'm, I kind of failed at, but that's okay. I'm still good. I got the Facebook side of it and, of course, the YouTube. So that's, that's good enough for me. And like I said, um, I don't try to get greedy and try to reach overreach too much and try to do too much mm -hmm. at once because you don't want everything to come back on you and fail. So just do what you can do. And, you know, I try to stay in my lane and smack a bitch responsibly. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Dustin.